Okay, let me ask a question. Now Jesus asked the Pharisees, Matthew 22, 42. Matthew 22, 42. Uh, so what think you of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. He said unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? So. <laughs> Who wants to tackle that? I've answered it before, but... So we're not, the question wasn't very clear. Uh, no, I think, uh, it's, very, it's very clear. It's, what, it's the question that Jesus asked. I think if you, if you answer it, it will become very clear. <laughs> it's very clear. He said, whose son is David? He was asking them, whose son is David? Son yeah, he said, no, whose, no, whose son is Christ? He, he, he said, what think you of Christ? Whose son is he? Son of God. Ah. Well, yes, from the line of David. Although, technically speaking, since his conception was by the Holy Ghost, he's not really the son of David in that sense. Ah, Pastor Victor. Mary was of the line of David. Too. Oh, okay. Matthew, Matthew 1 1, Pastor Victor. Ah, okay. I'm just. So, so Matthew 1, 1 says, this is the gene genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So the, the Bible says, <laughs> sorry, Pastor, I'm not really answering the question. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm No, you, you, you are now. <laughs> the Bible says it. That settles it. I believe it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> but yes, but this genealogy doesn't show that he's the son of David. Ah. Uh. Is he the son of Mahashala <laughs> Yeah, we have missed you. <laughs> Jen, I you. <laughs> oh, Jenna. Uh. <laughs> uh. Yes, but Brother Tim, yes, sir. technically, reading through that genealogy, it actually doesn't show Jesus to be the son of David. Well, it, it could be argued, Pastor, that um, I'll just take a sip of my tea. <laughs> it depends, Pastor, on how you look at it, though. Would you say you're the son of your great, 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 yeah, great, great, great? That's exactly where I was going. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, but but he he doesn't. He, you see, it ends by saying, and Jacob begat this verse 16. Jacob begat. Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus. Yeah, I think I think I, I think I understand where uh, Father Tim is coming from in the sense that if David is part of the um, lineage, when the great grand grandfather, I don't know what level of great father, <laughs> grandfather, is to the great grandfather of who of who. 
of, of, of Joseph, though, because the Bible here says this is the, the um, so let me read before I paraphrase. So the Bible book of generation of Jesus Christ, isn't it? The son of David, the son of Abraham in verse one. So why is someone yeah, saying but, you're the son of David? No, no, that, that's not, that's not my argument. That's not your. Okay, we, sorry, what's we, the argument? The argument is by the time we get to verse 17, but verse 16, Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So that is, Jesus didn't descend from that line because Joseph was not his father. So Bob, wait, verse one says, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Uh, so I'm asking, how do we reconcile that? I know what it says. It says that, but by the time we get to this verse 16, he's not, he's actually Jacob, Jacob did Joseph didn't give birth to him. Yeah, Pastor, Pastor I guess. Oh, but we, but we Jacob can... didn't oh, Joseph didn't give birth to him based on the fact that the Holy Spirit wasn't conceived by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Oh, I don't understand. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm lost. Just, just Maybe I should just shut up. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't don't shut up. That, that's what we're doing. It's Bible study. We're asking difficult questions. Oh, questions it, 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 it actually looks like does it? I don't know. Just I'm just wondering. It, it seems to be shifting more to Mary than than than. But so to I, was, I, was, I was even thinking that because it it starts with David. And it goes to Joseph, but then there's another lineage that goes to Mary. So it's Mary. So it seems one, Mary is, one is lineage actually... goes to Mary. I'm, I'm yeah. lost. So from David, <laughs> Mary, I, I think it's, it's a, uh, what, what's your one? There's another Luke, genealogy. Yeah, Luke, I think it's Luke's account. Yeah, it's Luke. either Mark or Luke's account that, is, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, that looks at. So let's look, let's go there. Let's go there. I, I think I think both of them go through Joseph, Pastor. Um, no, no, no. Okay. It's Mary. Because no, no, the other one is Mary. It's, it's Mary. Mary. No, no, no. In Luke chapter 3, verse 23, it says, Now okay. Joseph himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age, being as was supposed, the son of Joseph, the son of uh -huh. As the was Martha, supposed. As, as was supposed. The son of Joseph. So it doesn't, it, even this doesn't go through Mary, it goes through Joseph. So, no, no, no. Look, look, okay. Let's let's go. Let's let's there's another genealogy. Nah, there's one, yeah, there's one that's through Mary. I'll look for it. Yes, there's another genealogy. Anyway, okay, whilst, whilst we're looking for that, to answer the question, I think, um, at least for, for, um, in my mind, I think Romans chapter one um, answers the question about who Christ is, um, how he is both the son of David and also the son of God. I think that was Jesus' question. That, that's what, that was what Jesus, Jesus was trying to get through to them. So, um, Romans chapter one says, uh, from verse, I think I'll start from this one, but um, it says, Paul is born servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the, to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh. So according to the flesh, he was the son of David, because he was born of the seed of David, and declared to be the son of God with power. So according to um, the spirit of holy, by the spirit of holiness, which is the Holy Spirit, um, by the resurrection of, from the dead. So spiritually, or, um, you know, his spiritual lineage, he's the son of God, and that's why David could call him Lord. But of the flesh, he is the son of, the son of David. I don't know if that answers your question, Pastor, but... It, it perfectly does. That's that's the that's the answer. But Can that's the answer. But we are, but we have uh, we have on 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 earth another can of worms. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which yeah. we now need to address. Yeah. Okay. The Mary one. Yes. <coughs> because you, you see, if, if look now actually throws the you actually now throws the spanner in the works, where it says. He was supposed, he was presumed to be the son of Joseph. Mm. But, which, but he wasn't, we know he wasn't the son of Joseph. Yeah, yeah. 
So I know when I, when I was growing up, when I was a younger Christian, when I was um, in my early 20s, I know there was, um, there was a common saying then, and I think it was later on that I realized it wasn't so. There was a thing I heard that these two genealogies, the one in Matthew and the one in Luke, that one of them was through Joseph, the other one was through Moses. And then later on, when I was, the other one was through Mary. And then I was, I was reading it. I, I, I don't know. I haven't found this. Mary There's one. another one. There's another one. Ah, okay. yeah, there is. There is where. Let's let's look for it. I've, did you find it, Belgi? Oh, we there is another one. Luke account. There is a, oh, another one, Pastor. The, uh? the Luke account, you mean? No, a, a genealogy. Genealogy. Not not an account, a genealogy. Yeah, the, the Luke. Um, in Luke. Luke, what's that? Luke the sorry, I keep muting myself. Luke three. That was the genealogy of Jesus Christ. That then starts with Jesus being this is the as was supposed, but I don't know whether that's the one you were referring to or you meant another one. Where is it? Luke three twenty three <clears throat> was the as was supposed. Yeah, ah, okay. Let's follow it. Let's follow that. Let's follow that genealogy all the way. Okay. Let's let's see. Ah, so this is the one that was supposed to be Mary's one, but it doesn't seem. Okay, so. no, this one is this is Joseph's one too. This one is both of them are Joseph. I think the was I think it was just it's just like it's just one of the statements like we say heaven help those who help themselves. There's not in the Bible. I don't think there's a genealogy that says um, Mary. Let me see. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. <laughs> Leave here right now. Um, oh, uh, because I, I'm trying to find Mary's own, um, antecedents where, where it talks about mary being the son of david i think there's somewhere wait let, let me see where let me see if i can but I, that may not be the answer i'm just i'm i'm just i just i'm I, i'm still i still the question still remains What question, Pastor? The one Pastor Tunji answered. No, no, no. That one's been answered. The one about where, where technically it doesn't appear that Jesus is the son of, the, of Joseph. And that, well, he, he's, we know he's not the son of Joseph. So, why is his genealogy? So, I think there's a scripture that says, Jesus. Um, that states Jesus as the son of Mary, but it's not a genealogy. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah, there's a genealogy of Jesus. Okay, I, oh. Luke 127 tells us who, who, anyway, what Mary, where Mary comes from. No, that's, that's, that's <laughs> Joseph. That's the same Joseph. To a virgin, is that, that's the same Joseph. I'm trying to find the one where, which tells us that Mary is from okay, this thing. So I don't think there's one. Right? I don't think. Okay. I don't think Pastor, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty I think, sure I think, there is not one. I think I think there's is one of those things that that just. Uh, no, no, I, the, the thing is, let let's ask the question. But okay, is it not Mark six three? Is not this the so Mark six son of three Mary. is not a joke. So that's just saying that Jesus yeah. was the son of Mary, but it's not a genealogy of Mary. Yeah, it's not. A, okay. It didn't say that Mary. Yeah. You no, know, it didn't say that Mary is the son of David. Yeah. Yeah. I. I, I don't believe there is so, one. Are you saying that Mary is from David's lineage? I know. I'm asking how Jesus's genealogy. Yeah. 
is, is, is tied to Joseph when Joseph is not his father. Well, Joseph was his father. Based on the flesh is what the scripture says. No, but jo Joseph wasn't his father on the flesh. It's more Mary. So we're trying to connect Mary. Mary, Mary ha it has to connect to Mary. Otherwise, even that falls through. Because if it's not Mary, then he's not the son of David, full stop. No, I think so. I, that goes back I, to I my think, question. Are we saying yeah. that Mary is from the lineage of David? Yeah, I think uh, it, it, it may have as well be that Mary is from the lineage of David, but I think also we have to consider that biblical times your genealogy is reckoned you know, from, from your father. father. Yes, it's from your father. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was it was God in his word of a, in his in his foreknowledge, knowing that Joseph was going to be it. And uh, I think he preliminary that I certainly have no problem with Joseph, um, Jesus being the son of David. Um, Son of Joseph, whatsoever. Um, no, no, no. I, I don't. I, I, I'm, I'm saying if the genealogy is from your father, mm. you know, and Joseph is not his father. Yeah. I, 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 I have no question. I, I, I have no doubt. Of Harry, why I, I have no Joseph problem. But I'm just. I'm just we we're trying to answer a question. Wait, hang on. Why are we saying Joseph is not his father? Is this basically because he was born of the Holy Spirit, or? Why are we yeah. saying Joseph is not his father? Yeah, yeah but, no but then, <laughs> yeah, that, but that, then that, the thing is, but so yes, we understand that. But then, he, oh, yeah. oh, by the flesh, though, by the the part, the very yeah. mere fact that Mary was married to Joseph or bestowed or enthroned, whatever the word is, to um, to Joseph is what why he is the father. Uh, you like take a high five? Come and take, come and take it. <laughs> mm. Take the high five. That. That's actually the answer to the question, um, as, as far as I can see. Why, even though Jesus doesn't physically come from the lineage of Joseph, the Bible says that a man will leave his father and mother cleave to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Yeah. So the minute Mary is joined to Joseph, whatever comes of her is of the household of wherever he is from, because they are one flesh. So would, would you say the concept of adoption then? The, yes, the, the, the concept of adoption is, 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 is there subtly. Yeah. But then the spirit or the, the concept of one flesh is also there. So, because he is of the lineage of David and she is married to him and they are one flesh, whatever comes of her is of the lineage of David. Because if there was an inheritance, if there was an inheritance, Jesus would have got it because he was the firstborn. Ah, it's interesting, isn't it? I know I've got you all thinking now. I've got your uh, your mental juices flowing. Pastor, because the other bit, sorry, is that Joseph had known Mary at this point. They were just bestrove, you know, that word, bestrove. So is that basically the same as being married, being promised to be married? Have they done some sort of a, a marriage, just not all of it? And then she became, she came pregnant with them, um, Jesus. Do you get it? Yes, they were betrothed to be married and then yeah. she, she was, but... So that's basically I think the, angel, the same as... No, no, because I think... It, well, but Mary is, hadn't known Joseph though, before she became pregnant with Jesus. Yeah, because it wasn't Joseph's son. Yeah. But... Well, you know, you said that it's because she's, once she's in... When she's married to Joseph, anything of that household is Joseph's. Yeah. But was the bestrothal the same as being married to Joseph? I, um, I know. I think um, if you go to Matthew chapter 1, now the birth of Jesus Christ, verse 18, was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, 
was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Verse 24. I think that answers your question. Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. But then the thing is, even when you read it, the Bible says he's her husband at that point. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I spouse. caught that as well. I thought that yes. was incredible. <laughs> yes. Is it called yes. their husband? Be, be, betrothal, you know, usually is the first step, you know, and you are, you are, once you are betrothed, nobody else can come near you again. But there is still the, there is still the marriage. So, mm. but he took that step when the angel told him. So he actually did marry her before the child was born. Mm. So because the angel told him, don't be and so he did exactly that. Um, he took her unto him as wife. And then verse 25 says, and he did not know her till she had brought, he didn't sleep with her. He had no sexual union with her until she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. So he did, he did marry her before. So by the time the baby was born, they, they, were, they, were, they were properly married. But so I have a digression, digression. I digression. I digression. <laughs> yeah. so I'm not thinking about <laughs> digression. So the scripture that says that as it was fulfilled, um, so it will be fulfilled as it's written, that a virgin would give birth. So, so that means prophecy actually categorically said a virgin would give birth. So why did, um, you know, why did the Pharisees or did, why did they believe Jesus was the, the, you know, the Messiah at that point when prophecy, where it was clear that he was the- uh, Was that the only prophecy they didn't believe? I know. <laughs> there were a thousand professors. <laughs> it doesn't have good for business. <laughs> you, you are taking one. They, they, they didn't believe any prophecy. So <laughs> that one. <laughs> you see, that, uh, that was the list of the man rose from the dead. They didn't believe that. Then you are talking about a virgin would conceive. <laughs> they didn't believe anything. They, they, had, they were. Uh, no, it, but like, first of all, like they didn't said, believe. It was business. They were. Uh -huh. Is it that they, they didn't they, believe or they didn't want to, they didn't want anything they didn't to want their, their yes, to come and tamper with the business deals, yes. With their cushy mm. lifestyle. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, it's more, it more it's, it's uh, that was not the only prophecy that was fulfilled. There were a thousand prophecies that were fulfilled before, <laughs> before their very eyes. So mm. many, 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 you know? And they just chose not to. Believe. Okay, well, that's, that's, um, that's good. Let's, uh, I, I just, I just wanted to, Ratunji has answered our question, which is, whose son was he? So it, it, the scripture is very categorical about that. Um, it was the son of David after the flesh, son of God after the spirit. And uh, Romans helps us to understand that. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I thought everybody would have been able to answer that question because I, I have thought that before, you know. And I don't know why nobody, only Tunji was the one who answered. Uh, so maybe I will ask it again in another month or two. And see whether we will all remember. At least those of us who are here now. 
Okay, any other questions? Good, I, I think we have uh, uh, shaken. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, Jesus is not the son of Mahashalash. <laughs> Janavi. <laughs> Tim can't get you can't get to my <laughs> What what can I say, Pastor? <laughs> okay, any other question? Um, just to bring us back to that genealogy, I think the way it works out is actually when you see whose father Joseph's father was. It's either the names are different or it's the same people speaking. So if you go to that Luke 3 genealogy, yes, it says, um, so that's where I think the, 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 the belief is, is either could be Mary as well. So it says, uh, now Jesus himself began his ministry about 30 years of age, being, I suppose he was, the son of Joseph. Now Joseph is the son of Heli. What verse? What, and okay. Heli is the son. Verse 23, okay. Yes, yeah, so 23. Yeah, so Joseph is the son of Heli, who is the son of Matan, who is the son of Levi. Now when you go back to Matthew chapter 1, you actually see different names. Okay, so it goes from Matthew 1, verse 15. It says, Eliud begot Eliezer, Eliezer begot Matan, and Matan begot jo uh, Jacob, and Jacob begot. We lost, we lost you, Belgi. Jacob begot who? Jacob begot Joseph. So Jacob's father is different in Matthew. That's what Berge is trying to point out. The J who, who was listed as Jacob's father in Matthew is different from who is listed as Jacob's father in Luke. Mary. Okay. Berge, we can't hear you. Hello? Yeah, you the, the, the dodgy internet. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Made up. So, so either we're talking about in-laws here, like father-in-law, I don't know, but so this is where people sort of think one is talking about Joseph's real parents, and then the other is talking about his father's in-law. So I think that's where the Mary thing comes in there. Yeah. But Pastor, did well, you anyway, know, I did not know remember you mentioning thoughts, food for thought. Sorry to interrupt, Belgium. But I did not remember you mentioning that in the old days, you know, they didn't used to put women in genealogies. So even not, if not, not that they didn't put them, mm. though, because you can see women in the genealogy. Mm. There are women there. It's just that your your genealogy was not taken from your mother, but from your mother. father. Okay. B yeah. Because but because women if were we, there. okay. Because if we look at the the looks, is it in which version? The looks version said supposed to. You know, that's supposed to in brackets. KJV. Mm. So I, I I would, if I was to look at this, I still think that the lineage in, in um, Luke is Mary's. But because of the linking to the, because she's married to Joseph and the, the link to the father's side, they put it, because why is that supposed to in brackets in KJV? Because I was just looking at different accounts and in KJV it says supposed to, so in brackets when they mentioned Joseph. Uh, no, as was supposed. As was supposed, yes, yeah, sorry. As was supposed. So for the me that, Jesus. yeah, so I'm interpreting that as. No, you, you can't interpret, interpret it. What, what that was saying is that pe people, um, the Jews thought that Joseph was his father. That's what that so you know they they supposed that Joseph was his father. And and we know that that no the Holy Ghost was his father. So yeah. So that's that's uh, and also to 
maybe to help on that particular bracket business in verse 23 the that as was supposed the the word there actually means um to a custom so i be usual so that was the as pastor was saying the custom or the understanding so that the suppose was not really yeah. Suppose in the sense that we know it's that, or it's it's imagined or presumed. Imagined it actually means the suppose really means accustomed. Yeah, and it, it was taken through his the lead, as genealogies are taken mm. through your father. Ah, this is interesting. Well, um, I, I think what is important is what we saw I, 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 in verse one, which says. This is the genealogy of Jesus. So God calls it the genealogy of Jesus. So um, we, we, you see, we're just, we're not, we're not questioning it. We're just trying to get a deeper understanding of it, you know, uh, and we're, we're coming to a, a better understanding of how God can reconcile Jesus being his son and then being the son of 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 David as of of uh, David and uh, Joseph as well so I, I I think it's and it's important that you also know these things because um people will ask you in, intelligent people who want to um, question the veracity of the scriptures will ask you. So you've got to be able to tell them what, why you believe what you believe. The pastor, there's something that can just ring uh, there in my mind. So has this happened? Oh gosh. Does this have anything to do with the scripture that says, Unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. It certainly yeah, does. Oh, it definitely yeah. does. Because the child is born of Mary, the son is given of God. Yes. Okay. You can't give what does not already exist. Mm -hmm. Whereas when a child is born, they come, it comes together at a particular point to be created. But God was trying to show you that his son didn't come into existence at that point. Mm -hmm. He was born at that point, but he was given before that point. Remember the lamb was slain from the foundations of the earth. <laughs> and then there's a, there's a scripture which I love. I, I think it's, um, Ma, what's this, uh, what's this prophet, prophet uh, Mark? Uh, let me see if I find this in front of me. I think it's my car five, I think. Let me see. What's the scripture that talks about who's going forth? It's, it's Gerald, that's your cue. <laughs> Is it Micah five two? Yeah, Micah five two. That's the one. That's the one. But thou now let let let's read that Micah five two. But thou Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be the though thou be the little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee. Remember, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Ephrata. Okay. Yet out of this shall come forth unto me, that is to be the ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. You, you see that? Does everybody see that? Hmm. He's going forth. You know what that, you know what his going forth means? 
Nobody's talking to me. Does anybody know what? Okay, let's read one of the more modern versions. His origins. His origins are from what? Of old, from everlasting. Yeah. <clears throat> so, in other words, he has, he has no beginning. He's everlasting. But he became out of him, out of he came out of Bethlehem Ephrata as a child, but he's going forth. He before he became a child, he had been from everlasting. Hallelujah. <laughs> so yes, uh, um, Beulah, you can see that yes, it's it it, it, it ties in beautifully it also answers that question of whose son is he so as a son uh, as a child he's the son of david mm -hmm. as a son he's the son of god that's why you notice he was never called the son of david he was never called he was always either called son of man or son of god those were the two you always the son and then when remember when he asked who do men say that i am the revelation that got him very excited was when Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that excited because that was, you know, <laughs> that was the ultimate revelation. He didn't say you are Mary's son, you are uh, Joseph's son. He said you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So, Pastor, does that mean when you got baptized, people didn't take notes <laughs> when the voice spoke from heaven and everything? Like, people didn't take notes of that? I don't think, I, it's, it's hard to understand whether everybody heard it yeah. or whether it was just John and he that heard it. It's, 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 not, yeah. it's not very clear. I don't think everybody heard it. I think they heard the thundering. Yeah, because I was, I, was, I, was, I was thinking, I, I didn't want to confuse it if it was at the cross where it says, or at that time where the scripture says that the people thought there was a thunder. That it was a thunder. You know, when, yeah, yeah. There, was, there, was, in, in, there was another time, yes, when he, God yeah. spoke and they said they thought it was a thunder. So it's very, very yeah. possible that they heard the, the voice and they, they heard the thunder, but they didn't know. And, but it is very categorical that John heard it and it's categorical that Jesus, you know, John, John because he was the one that needed to proclaim him. And God had told him the one you see the spirit descend on uh, without measure, you know, that's the, that's, the, that's the Messiah. So definitely John heard it and definitely. Yeah, and I only say that because obviously even John himself, before he got beheaded, he was asking, are you the one or should we? Uh, he, well, John, John only <laughs> got, doubting. he got confused because he was in prison and everything was <laughs> Exactly, <going> yeah. <laughs> but he was, he, before that, he was very categorical. And yeah, very, yeah. He knew exactly. <laughs> it was only because he was facing, yeah. he was facing his own Gethsemane moment. So it, it is possible that people heard it as well because it is oh no no i i i i, I don't know it is very possible they heard it I'm, i i don't know it's it's not it's not very clear yeah yeah in the scriptures it's very possible that they heard it and i i don't know i, I didn't say they didn't hear it mm, yeah. I, I i just said that i know categorically that john heard it and yeah i do i i didn't i'm not i don't know it it is not clear yeah, yeah, I get it. I, I suppose I was saying that because um, I was just thinking about how that um, sometimes it, I think maybe the question might be um, if they heard, then why did they still doubt? But I'm just thinking through scriptures, you find that people heard God, saw awesome stuff, <laughs> and they still doubted. <laughs> the Pharisees, what are you, you see, oh, you, don't you know, see. every time I read the scriptures, I get very, it fascinates me where they say, I that yeah. a you know notable what? miracle has taken place. We cannot yeah, yeah. question. Yeah. I, I just, I yeah. get fascinated I, I when they say. Because I think that even us in this day and age, we still do that. Right? Yeah. They, they yeah. say, oh, great miracles. That 
what let's let's whip them and tell them not to speak in that name again so they knew the power in the name so they knew they, were something there, but they, still they knew know. they knew the power in the name they knew it was a name that brought miracles and everything and jesus told them he said if i have not done the things that no man <laughs> has done you would have no excuse <laughs> Although the Pharisees were on another level, but sometimes we too doubt, you know, when God says uh, Sometimes uh, we are even worse because we have Holy Spirit inside us. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. So I think I, when we say Pharisees are on another level, we should be ashamed <laughs> of ourselves sometimes when we doubt God because we have God inside us, resident. Yeah. The, mm. he, he wasn't living in the Pharisees. Mm. Mm. We have him living inside and we still doubt. That is, he's speaking to us. He's, he is resident. He's not outside of us. Mm. Yeah. So that's why we should be careful about judging other people. And that's why he said we should remove the, the, the log from our eyes before we start looking at the speck in other people's eyes. Mm. Mm. That is so true. Because we, I don't think in our generation we have any reason to doubt God. I don't think we have any reason to doubt God at all. Mm. Each of us has seen, just on the prayer call alone, this on, on our morning prayer, we've seen some, some miracles that are earth-shaking. Mm -hmm. This year alone, I mean, not to go back into last year or the year before, or, or the, all the, this year alone, some of the things that God has done. Pastor, <laughs> we soon forgot. We soon forgot, you know. Yes, that's the problem. That's we soon forgot, you know. That's the problem. Mm. Yeah, we shouldn't forget. We really should remind ourselves and should encourage ourselves in the world. We shouldn't. Mm. We have no excuse. Wow, that's an interesting one. Any any other questions or anything else that anybody else is saying that they want us to talk about before we close? Don't start at five because that's what you would do at five minutes. To somebody will now bring one one very I difficult I, question. I do. Have, I have a question. I don't think it's difficult because I don't know anyway. But I think based on <laughs> based on um, your teachings in the morning around speaking tongues, you know, I think there's this. Yeah, I've heard you a couple of times, and it's um, <laughs> it's Reverend Tunji. I'm not judging, I'm not um, praying on the ghost, but I think what is so when we say, Oh, pray in the spirit and then pray in tongues, and so they know you can pray in spirit, it doesn't mean it's praying in tongues, you know. Yeah, I don't know what's it, yeah, what is praying in spirit, okay? What what no. Tunji is sta stating, and it's very <laughs> he's, he is he is very right, is that. <clears throat> We have to be careful also. You see, I, I was we we're talking this morning about the importance of speaking in tongues. And I, I don't want us to in any wise denigrate it. We must, it is very critical, it's important. And I believe that at, at, this, at the level we are, you cannot actually fulfill the, the depths of what God is calling you to if you refuse to utilize the some of the tools that he has placed at your disposal and i believe that tongues is one of the critical tools for prayer uh for edification and for a lot of other things which we we pointed out but what he's saying is that you can be still be in the spirit even though you don't speak in tongues and you can still pray because I, want, I wanted i wanted a, a, a realistic definition of what that is what that you means is it sounds very and i'm not sorry i'm not i'm not even saying I know, it's, right. I, let, me, let me explain it it's okay it's okay there's no i i yeah. I, I hear you and it's very it's, yeah. what we're saying is this that you you may have given your life to christ and received the holy spirit to dwell inside of you because that's what happens when you give your life to christ the holy spirit comes to dwell inside of you but you may not have received the gift of speaking in tongues. That does not mean that the Holy Spirit is not inside of you. And that does not mean that you cannot pray in the spirit, that praying in the spirit is being led by the spirit. The Holy Ghost giving you unction.
to pray, you know, praying uh, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So that's what it means to pray in the Spirit. So praying in the Spirit doesn't necessarily mean that you have to speak in tongues, mm -hmm. especially if you don't have the gift of tongues, or even if you don't believe in the gift of tongues. So my you point see, is, yes, my point. Yeah. Is there any other way to pray about? So when we say people pray in the spirit, I think it's a, it's a whatever. What's the word? You think it's a tautology? You, you, that, it's a tautology. Absolutely. No, you can pray. No, no. Way, see, there's no other again, way to pray. No, 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 no. Oh no, you you are forgetting that you can, you can be you can be carnal. You can you can actually no. have the Holy Spirit. And still pray in the flesh. Oh, I see your point. Yeah, where you are not, you are not yielded to the Holy Spirit, and you are not, you are, you are not committed to the to, to the goal of the Holy Spirit. You want, you have a desire. So let's say, for example, I want to be famous at all costs, and the Holy Ghost is telling me slow down, and I'm like, no, I will be famous at all costs. I can pray, I can pray, and I will be praying. But I'm not praying in the spirit. I'm praying in the flesh. I'm trying to get something for myself that is not necessarily approved or, or generated by the Holy Spirit. So that's why we say pray in the spirit, because you can play in, you can actually pray in the flesh. You can actually be carnal. The Bible talks about being carnally minded. You can be carnally minded. So you can be a, a, a Christian who's Kana, who's not, who's not spiritually minded. Yeah, Pastor, I was, I was probably going to highlight John 4, um, where Jesus is talking about God is spirit and they that worship him must do so in spirit and in, spirit in truth. And in I think truth. it's the truth bit that really highlights when we say pray in the spirit, it means there's the two elements there where you're praying in spirit, but there's truth behind that. Because some people, you, it looks like spirit, but it's falsehood. It's, it's, just, it's a lying spirit. Mm -hmm. But when it's God, what is desiring, praying in the spirit, it means this whole, you're actually praying or being led. Pastor, you actually said it. You're being led by the led spirit. So the spirit, spirit will give you utterance, yes. whether through tongues, utterance yeah. through words, for whatever prophecy, that's what it means. It's the spirit is the one that's actually directing you to truth of the word, not yeah. your own truth, because everybody's claiming my own truth these days. Or your desire, no. yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's actually yeah. leading you to the truth of the word. Yeah. So you know this is not you speaking because God is directing through scriptures, he's giving you all that, the word of God. So you know that's praying in the spirit because the spirit of God is giving you utterance. He's giving mm. scriptures to you. He's directing you how to pray, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Thanks, Brother Belgium. Because that, I think for me, that's, that's where I was driving that. The tangibility or the reality of what it is to pray in the spirit is yeah. what wasn't, in the sense that it is the spirit of God giving you utterance and through his word, right? Yeah. Like, apart from the fact that you're not even, you're not praying selfish prayers, like you said, Pastor. It's not about like, your ambition, but it's the spirit of God giving you utterance based on his word. Um, yeah. and it doesn't have to be tongues you know, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah it doesn't have to be tongues yeah, <clears throat> the, yeah. the reason why we, we we emphasize that is because there's a danger that you you will you will go into error if you if you go beyond the word of god because the word of god does not tie salvation to speaking in tongues it just, mm. you know and and men you know when men start to you know, uh, uh, to, to go extra beyond what the word says and says, unless you do this, you cannot be that. Unless you do this, you can't, you know, then they, they begin to bring doctrines, strange doctrines that God didn't bring. So, uh, and, and then we begin to judge things that we have no business judging. So if a person is not comfortable with speaking in tongues, then that's, that's okay. But you see, what we do is we give them scriptural basis for what we do now if somebody comes and says tongues is not it's not of the of the lord now that's demonic that one is demonic i i will not even you know I, it's not because it's contrary to the word of god i will not i will not entertain that you know Pastor, so, I, I i just wanted to also add is um that um in addition so it, it, when we say pain is spirit also we have to remember that um parlance a language uh, 
commonly used also comes comes into play. So when people, I know that when we say pain is free, most people, what they mean is let's pay in tongues. But yeah, there, but there's a reason why, one like Pastor Pastor has been that, that we have to emphasize that praying in the spirit um, is not always it's not just praying in tongues. It's beyond that, you know, because otherwise somebody who's not speaking in tongues yet um, might think, oh, I can't. They, they can't pray in the spirit. I, yes. I and then the, the scripture for me that actually seals this is um, Ephesians chapter six, right, um, and verse eighteen. It says, praying always with all, all kinds of prayers all and supplication in the spirit. So mm -hmm. when I'm praying a prayer of thanksgiving with my understanding, it has to be in the spirit. Right? So there's no other way to pray but in the spirit. But, but, when I, but there's a huge benefit to praying in tongues, in the prayer languages, which is tongues, right? So I know that when we say praying in the spirit, that's what we mean, but it's just good to okay. understand that. Somebody cannot may not be speaking in tongues, but they can also pray in the spirit. Um, yeah, so, but, and, and, and another but, interesting scripture is when he says, "I will pray in in my understanding, and I will pray in the spirit also." You know, uh, where he talks about you know, I, by by the leading of the Holy Spirit, I will pray in in my understanding. I think that's in Luke um, First Corinthians fourteen. I think. Uh, Pastor. Wait. Yes. Yeah. So. Is it not, I know it's semantics now, but is it not, would it not be clear if I say pray in the Holy Spirit? Because, yeah, pray in the Holy because Spirit. Because the tongues is, 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 is a gift, right? While if you, is a, the, if you say so pray in the Holy Spirit, it, for me, it, it just makes it clearer because, um, because what, when you- tongues is praying in the Holy Spirit? Yes, people, I, I, yeah. No, no, we, 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 no, again, we think that's extra, that, that's not, that, that's, it may be um, traditionally how we refer to it, but it's not, it's not biblically, it does, it's not sound, it's not biblically okay, but sound. but no, Pastor, it, it's in a, it, Jude one twenty. it says there, yeah. but you, dear friends, by building yourself up in the most holy faith and praying in this, the Holy Spirit. You know, let me you... ask you a question based on that scripture. Mm -hmm. So the person who is not praying in tongues yet, so you're saying they cannot build up themselves in the Holy Ghost? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that people no. tend to equate when you say praying in the Spirit by speak, speaking in tongues. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. It doesn't say yeah. that building up your uh, praying in the Holy Ghost there is praying in tongues. It just says, tongues. It, it just says praying in the Holy praying Spirit. In, yeah. Which is what we're saying. Right? Yeah. So, so I think what Jerry is saying. By praying in my understanding is, as well. Does that make sense? That, I, I think what Jerry is saying is the spirit part, not the tongue part. Right? Not the tongue part. I'm not talking about the tongue. Yes, I'm talking about the spirit, spirit part. part. Spirit because part. when you say praying the spirit. Praying the spirit, people speak is tongues. You get, but yeah. now we're, we're so it's praying as you are led by the spirit. Led to by the spirit, yes. Yeah. That is what we're trying to say, teach. Yes. That's so what so we're trying to teach. To say, we're trying to make sure. Holy Ghost, rather than just praying the spirit. Praying the spirit. Exactly. It's being misunderstood as praying in tongues. That's what she's saying. That's what we're saying. That's precisely what we're saying that when we say pray in the spirit, traditionally, and that is just, it's it just our culture, our, our uh, religious culture, everybody takes that to mean speaking in tongues. Mm. And we're saying that that's not necessarily so, that you can actually pray in the spirit and not be pray, speaking in tongues. So- yeah, and there is a for that to say, rather than just say pray in the spirit, can we say pray in the Holy, in the Holy Ghost? <laughs> No, no, that's the same thing. It's the same thing. You know, yes, no, that's, yes. that's semantics. It's the same. It's that's praying in the Holy Ghost. Semantics, but you know, pass it's off. praying in the Holy Ghost is the same thing as saying, "Let the Spirit of God lead you," and that leading could be in tongues, yeah. or it could be in your understanding, or it could be a song. It could be thanksgiving. It could be a prophecy. It could be something you write. It could be something you, you know. So what we're saying, whether you say it in the Holy Ghost, in the Spirit, in uh, what, however you couch it, what engage we're saying is, with the Spirit of God. <laughs> e engage, but however you still couch it, what we're saying is, don't take that to mean praying in tongues only. So when you want to say pray in tongues, say pray in tongues. Pray on me. Okay, so when you want to say pray in tongues, say pray in tongues. If you if you have the gift, pray in, pray in tongues. Okay, mm. so that way there's no confusion as to whether praying in the spirit 
is praying in tongues or not. Because praying in the mm. spirit is much more than praying in tongues. So let's mm -hmm. let's not confuse it and let's not confuse our people. We we have let we have learned that. Um, now you're not gonna be able to teach everybody that, but you you know it. And when you teach, but you I teach think, it. Yeah, but I think that, that there's no other way to pray. So I think we should teach people how to pray in the spirit as a standard. Not no, that, to be, that, 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 my that, personal opinion. Not to basically say, oh, what we're saying in the prayer points, can you pray in the spirit? You know, there's no other way to pray apart from praying with this utterance of the spirit, or you're wasting no, your no, time. No, no, no. Okay. There, there is no other way, but people do pray other ways. So <laughs> when Jesus said, those who worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth, that means that there are people who worship him in, in not in spirit and not in truth. So we, don't say there's no other way, because even around you, sometimes you are not we are not actually praying in the spirit we are if you you see if your mind is on on the food you are going to eat or your problem has completely taken over your mind and we're praying and you are praying you may not be praying in the spirit yeah but that's the thing i'm saying that that's that prayer where is it going is what i'm saying do you get what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> and no, but that's why when we say let's pray in the spirit, we're encouraging everybody to oh, engage, okay. engage okay. in the spirit. Don't let your mind wander. Don't pray carnal prayers. Don't pray uh, um, sensual <laughs> prayers. Don't pray selfish prayers. Pray in the spirit. Let the Holy Ghost lead you. Let him direct you. So if you were wondering before or your ambition was taken over or it, was, uh, uh, um, it wasn't led by God, then at that point you, you engage again you engage mm -hmm. so it's, it is critical that there's no there should be no other way to pray but there are other ways mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah there shouldn't be but there are so that's why we we, we keep calling ourselves to order yeah and by, and by the way it's been taught it's been taught over two wednesdays on on, the, on, on this prayer call this particular mm -hmm. issue uh, we dealt with last year uh, where we looked at it in depth over two over, over two wednesdays this issue of speaking in tongues and praying in the spirit. But we will keep. Okay, thank you everyone. That was very, very good and insightful. Thank you. Sorry well. for the team. We have run over. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've we've gone five minutes over. Okay, so it has been PhD, PhD questions. <laughs> Bila said it was going to be quick. Oh, Bila, I can't do it. It wasn't quick. <laughs> no such thing as a quick question at two minutes to the hour. It's, it's relative. <laughs> so on that note, can I ask a baby question for next week? Bring it so can, I, can I say no? Because Abina is used to asking questions, then it's long. That's why I humbly say next week. Oh. Please bring it next week. <laughs> bring it next week. So Abina, write it down. Write it down. Yes. <laughs> Mother who if you if you ask it, there may be a temptation to try to answer a bit of it, and then we'll go. Yeah, thanks to me, please. It may even be a one line now. No, no, no. If one is one line, the it will be next week's one line. Send it to me, please. The lines are closed for today. Even if it's a one liner and it's a one line response, you will get it next week. Awesome. at the beginning as well so let's let's ask the question at the beginning you know that time exactly I, exactly so next week at least we know we have one question at the very you know, beginning now you know pastor sometimes the questions come over the confidence to even ask it is not there because your mind is thinking how can you even ask that <laughs> no but no no but sister Abna, you, have you noticed that some of those questions you think are very silly they, they all turn out to be very deep and profound questions so don't 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 try don't censor yourself don't self-censor just yes, if, if you get it ask it that i mean that's how i learned though i used to ask all those crazy questions and sometimes people will say shut up stop asking so they, my past pastors and teachers stop asking such questions go and go go and face, you know how african parents say go and finish your book <laughs> <laughs> see all this time i would have asked you no always ask ask <laughs> always ask we will we will it, it's not nothing is too stupid it's it, it will it, because it's it's those questions that uh, lead to life father tim over to you amen okay thank you everyone thank you for your questions and contributions and and participating tonight so it's 
yes, time time to wrap up. Just a reminder for us all, as we always do when we meet, to encourage one another to please give. And should you, well, not please give, but should you like to give, um, then please uh, do so. Uh, do so willingly and and determine in your hearts what you're going to give. So just a reminder for us, for those that would like to give. Um, I believe that's it, Pastor. What a prayer, and then we'll to send us all off tonight, please. Father, thank you for another time in your presence. What, what, how sweet your word is. And thank you, Father, that um, we are sons of God. Because the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who is resident and who leads us, who leads us in the way that sons should go. And thank you that by him, we can pray all manners of prayers. We can pray in the understanding. We can pray in, the, in tongues. We can pray... Uh, prayers of thanksgiving of agreement uh, supplications all kinds of prayers and and this is our, your admonition to us to pray without ceasing pray all kinds of prayers and and we thank you and thank you father for as you lead us as we seek your kingdom and your righteousness we thank you that you know our needs you know our desires and you sort them out while we seek you and so we are very confident. We don't have to worry or be anxious about anything. Uh, but by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, we can make our requests known unto you. Father, you know our requests. We remind you of them. We table them again. And we say thank you that you are sorting them out while we advance your kingdom and your righteousness. We bless you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, you, Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pastor. Have a good one. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you.